Hello and welcome to Foreclosure Tuesdays Week 3, your guide to foreclosure insights, techniques, and resources. Join us every Tuesday for expert tips, market trends, and valuable resources to navigate foreclosures. Whether you're looking to save your home from foreclosure or invest wisely, this is going to be your place to be. I named this show Foreclosure Tuesdays because in Georgia and in Texas, their foreclosures take place the first Tuesday of each and every month. However, this information is effective in any state and for anyone regardless to what day of the week your foreclosure auction takes place. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Today's question is, my home was just foreclosed on. I still live in a home, so what should I do? Well, here are five practical steps for anyone that's just lost their property to foreclosure, but they have not moved out yet. Step number one, you need to contact a foreclosing attorney. Remember, it's the foreclosing attorney that's responsible for auctioning your home. You need to find out if your home was purchased at the auction or if it went back to the lender. This is vital to determine what your next steps are. Now, if someone purchased your home successfully at the auction, you need to find out what amount the property sold for. Any amount over the amount that you owe to your lender is your money. Let me repeat, any amount that your home was sold for over the amount that you owe to your lender is your money. So, for instance, if you owed your lender $200,000 and someone won the highest bid at $230,000, the overage of $30,000 belongs to you. Your lender foreclosed on you to satisfy the balance that you owe to them. Any amount over that amount belongs to you. This is only applicable if someone has purchased a home at the auction and not if the home went back to the lender. If the home did go back to the lender, this is called REO, real estate owned. Step number two, communicate with your lender. Contact your lender immediately to discuss your situation. Depending upon what type of loan you have, for FHA loans for instance, and your property did not get purchased at the auction, you can request to remain in your property. This program is called the Request for Continued Occupancy Conveyance. You basically are allowed to remain in the home for a predetermined period of time. It is vital that you request this option as soon as possible because your lender's next step is to begin the dispossessory process, better known as eviction. Step number three, seek legal advice. Consult a real estate attorney to understand the legal implications and explore any potential legal defenses or avenues for delaying the eviction process. Now, if you feel that you've been wrongfully foreclosed on, please contact an attorney that specializes in these types of cases. Also, you need to verify what your state's foreclosure practices are and see if you, the homeowner, or should I say the previous homeowner, have the statutory right of redemption. If so, the redemption period begins after the foreclosure auction has occurred. You still own your home and you have the right to redeem it by paying the back payments, penalty, interest, and attorney's fees within the redemption period. Your lender cannot evict you and you also have the right to sell your home during that same period. Now, if someone has purchased your home at the auction, they do not own your home as of yet. They basically have purchased the property with a post-dated foreclosure deed, and it goes into effect at 11.59 p.m. on the last day of your right of redemption period. However, if you do not have the statutory right of redemption, you are considered no longer the owner of that property. Step number four, do not assume that your lender will work with you after they own your home. If you are after the redemption period or if there is no statutory right of redemption, your property is considered an REO. Your lender will no longer work with you or be willing to negotiate with you in purchasing your property back. So don't bother to waste your time. The only way that I've seen this possible is if you have cash to purchase the property at their purchase price. Your previous balance is no longer a factor. The lender will only consider selling the property to you at fair market value. Also, please don't be surprised if you need to move out of the property before you can close on a property. And this is because the lender needs to not only have ownership, but they also need to have possession before this transaction is considered legal. I've only seen this successful one time in my entire 30 years of being in a real estate business, and that is because I'm the one that negotiated it. Step number five, prepare for the transition. Start planning your move by organizing your belongings and consider temporary housing options. Reach out to local communities, resources, charities, as well as government assistance programs that may offer assistance during this challenging time. Also, you want to check with your lender. If it's an REO or the buyer has purchased a property at the auction, you want to see if they offer cash for keys. 
this amount can vary anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000. If this option is available, make sure that you leave the property in pristine condition. In other words, broom clean. Nothing broken or taken other than your personal belongings and return the keys to the designated person. Get a walkthrough inspection after you've walked through the property with their designated agent and give them the keys at the same time that you get the check. Do not expect that check to be mailed to you at a later time. All right, folks, join us every Tuesday for expert tips, market trends, and valuable resources to navigate foreclosures. Whether you're looking to save your home from foreclosure or invest wisely, explore foreclosure insights, learn successful techniques, access resources, and discover options for homeowners and investors. Subscribe now and turn your Tuesdays into an investment in your future.